So Senator Ron Wyden tweeted this out. They did another vote on this uh, FISA Section 702 surveillance powers. After rejecting an amendment to bolster warrant requirements when spying involves U.S. persons. So now they're going to... Ron Wyden tweeted this out, April 12th. He said, the bill represents one of the most dramatic and terrifying expansions of government surveillance authority in history. I will do everything in my power to stop it from passing in the Senate. So that's good. That's like, a, that guy's a real lefty. Lefties are supposed to be against this. That shows you the Democrats aren't real lefties. The lefties are right. The Democrats are authoritarians. I don't want to call them right wing because those those terms don't mean anything anymore. So here Edward Snowden says the NSA is just days. This is on April 15th. That's today at 10 a.m. The NSA is just days away from taking over the Internet. And it's not on the front page of any newspaper because no one has noticed. Well, I thought they already had. Maybe yeah, that's they don't why. They own the Internet already? Uh well, here, I'm going to show you. So this woman, her name is uh, Elizabeth Gotin. She's the co-director of the Liberty and National Security Program at the Brennan Center for Justice. And so she did a quick thread. I want to read some of it to you. She said, buried in the Section 702 reauthorization bill, it's called RISA, R-I-S-S-R-S-A-A. It passed by the House on Friday. It's the biggest expansion of domestic surveillance since the Patriot Act. Senator Wyden calls this power terrifying, and he's right. Uh, I'll explain how this new power works. Under current law, the government can compel electronic communication service providers that have direct access to communications to assist the NSA in conducting Section 702 surveillance. So they can compel any company, meaning your cable company, your telephone company, um, anybody, if you use a public Wi-Fi at a coffee shop. Uh, so here... In practice, that means companies like Verizon and Google must turn over the communications of the targets of Section 702 surveillance. The targets much, must be foreigners overseas, although the communications can and do include communications with Americans. That's the problem. Um, through a seemingly innocuous change to the definition of electronic communication surveillance provider, an amendment offered by House Intel Committee leaders and passed by the House vastly expands the universe of entities that can be compelled to assist the NSA. If the bill becomes law, any company or individual that provides any service whatsoever may be forced to assist in NSA surveillance as long as they have access to equipment on which communications are transmitted or stored, such as routers, servers, cell towers, etc. This is why China is so bad, I That's thought. why China is so bad, but now we're we got to compete with China. This, that sweeps in an enormous range of U.S. businesses that provide Wi-Fi to their customers and therefore have access to equipment on which communications transit. Barber shops, laundromats, fitness centers, hardware stores, dentist offices. The list goes on and on. It also includes commercial landlords that rent out the office space where tens of millions of Americans go to work every day. Offices of journalists, lawyers, nonprofits, financial advisors, healthcare providers, and more. When the amendment was first unveiled, one of the FISA court, Amici, what is Amici? I'm going to guess a judge or something. One of the FISA court, Amici, took the highly unusual step of sounding a public alarm. Even the FISA court people are sounding the alarm. Civil liberties advocates noted that the provision would encompass hotels, libraries, and coffee shops. Can you look up Amici? Mm -hmm. The version of HPSCI leaders offered Friday, therefore, exempts hotels, library shops, and coffee shops, plus a handful of other establishments. But as the FISA court amicus pro promptly pointed out, the vast majority of U.S. businesses remain fair game. The amendment even extends to service providers who come into our homes, house cleaners, plumbers, people performing repairs, and IT service providers have access to laptops and routers inside our homes and could be forced to serve as surrogate spies, forcing people to spy on you. None of these people or businesses would be allowed to tell anyone about the assistance that they were compelled to provide to the government. They would be under a gag order and they would face heavy penalties if they failed to comply with it that's not even the worst part 
Unlike Google and Verizon, most of these businesses and individuals lack the ability to isolate and turn over a target's communication, so they would be required to give the NSA access to the equipment itself or to use techniques or devices presumably provided by the NSA to copy and turn over entire communication streams and or repositories of stored communications, which would inevitably include vast quantities of wholly domestic communications. And Michi advises and assists courts on matters of law. Okay, thank you. The NSA having wholesale access to domestic communications on an unprecedented scale would then be on the honor system to pull out and retain only the communications of approved foreign targets. Let that sink in. (laughs) Of course, they're not going to do that. The leaders deny that the administration has any intent to use the provision so broadly. Oh, why would we not trust the government? Supposedly, there is a sink... There is a single type of service provider that the government wants to rope in, but they didn't want anyone to know what that service provider was. So they they hid the real goal by writing the amendment as broadly and as vaguely as possible. But no worries, Americans. The administration isn't actually going to use all the power it just persuaded the House of Representatives to give it. I cannot overstate how mind-blowingly irresponsible that is. I don't think any administration should be trusted with an Orwellian power like this one. But even if this administration doesn't plan to make full use of it, there are certain powers of government should not have in a democracy. There are certain powers a government should not have in a democracy. The ability to force ordinary businesses and individuals to serve as surrogate spies is one of them. Even if the targets are supposed to be foreigners. A power this sweeping will be abused. Let me bring in Jackson Hinkle. Jackson, have you heard about this? Are you up on this story? And what do you make of this? You mean uh, all the CIA's most basic of practices that they're now just trying to legally codify? Yeah, that's exactly. The, I mean, yeah, that's what this like one thing did. This Elizabeth woman, she did a great job of breaking it down, and it is scary, but. Uh, you know, I pity the fools that don't understand or believe that the government hasn't already been doing this for literally decades. And this was all exposed in Vault 7. And, you know, like there, this is why Assange is in Belmarsh prison right now, rotting away. And they're trying to extradite him like they, they, they're just trying to legally codify it now. So th- there's no chance that anyone could ever leak anything again, because now if someone wants to leak something, they'll be like, well, yeah, we already codified this into law. So what, what do you? What are you trying to expose? This is legal. So they're trying to make unbelievable anti-constitutional criminality legal. That's what this is. And Mike Johnson's for it. It's like legalizing jo- torture. Like we're always right. tortured, obviously. We've always tortured. <laughs> but but like not- want to make it legal so there's more of it. Uh, they're normalizing it. Put it this way. They're making people feel like this is just a normal way to go. I've watched people condemn China for this exact same thing. I think it was a moon video about how China takes discord and they can access the information whenever they want and the people are obligated to comply or else. That's the exact thing I've seen. A whole video about how bad China is for this very thing that they're trying to pass right now. This is keeping secrets to the to the point where you're not only sleeping with the enemy, but the enemy's putting a pillow over your face while you sleep. This is... Uh, so this, so this idea, so I, I cannot help but go back to when Cornell West came on my show and called Donald Trump a fascist and he didn't say the same thing about Don, uh, Joe Biden and the Democrat. And I had to explain to the Harvard professor who pretended to be a dummy, dumber than me, that fascism's already here, dummy. He might be dumber than you. He might be. He's probably as dumb he's as probably as, Oh, he for sure is. Yeah, he's, he's dumb. for sure is as it's dumb your, as me. It's your fault for trusting him, to be honest. You should have seen through him immediately because of his hair alone. I didn't see through him immediately, <laughs> but I certainly, when he pretended, <laughs> or maybe he doesn't see it. Uh, no, a I life of letters lived at a distance. You ever hear that said about me? That's what that is. That's a p- no real, real world expertise, a jack shit other than being in a goddamn university. So they're just. He's lived in an ivory tower his exactly entire that. life, exactly. and he tries to call himself a gangster. That's the fucking joke <laughs> of all jokes with well, Cornel he is West for the shittiest gang there is. Is the, the shitty, establishment? Yeah, he's he's the yeah. gangster for the establishment. So yeah, I had to explain to him that fascism already came to America a long fucking time ago. 
So why don't you quit pretending that just one po- political party or one politician is a fascist, okay? Because it insults my intelligence and insults everybody's. And you're just doing the bidding of the Democratic Party and the establishment when you do that. Because here it is. And this is the uniparty fascism. This isn't just uh, Republicans. This isn't just Democrats. This is the establishment class. This is the donor class instructing people to who, who really runs the country? The CIA. The CIA, and who do they really work for? They don't work for the president. They don't work for the citizens. The CIA works for a handful of billionaires and a cabal of corporations. That's exactly who they work for. Would you would, would you agree with that, Jackson? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people on the right wing in America who are well-meaning who say, you know, big government is the problem and it's the government that's the source of all our problems. It's like, well, not necessarily. I mean, they're, they're, every government is going to have corruption and evil people and they're going to do bad things, right? But a, a government isn't necessarily bad. Uh, the problem is in America, like you just said, our government is not, is, is not run by the people. It's run by corporations and foreign government lobbying groups and the military industrial we're complex. Shell. We're shell company. We got hollowed out by we're private shell equity. company. And now everything, it's like we're like the Boeing plane. The door's fucking falling off. That's what we are now. That's what we are. Come see us on tour. We're going to be in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Vancouver, British Columbia, first show sold out, Denver, Colorado, Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, and Minneapolis. We're coming back to Minneapolis. If you couldn't get tickets last time, there'll be some available this time. We're doing two shows. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm-hmm.